Well, hello kids and curious adults. Here we are with um, another piece of information from No SLLC. What we're going to talk about uh, today for a few minutes is this. It's called a Wheatstone Bridge, named after Mr. Wheatstone. Well, maybe his name was Wheat and he was stoned at the time he figured this out. Uh, no, nah, his name really was Wheatstone. This is the normal uh, schematic drawing that you see for these things. What you can do with this, um, amongst many other things, but uh, certainly one of the things I did with it in the telephone company, um, was figure out a, a resistance value for a cable pair, very accurately using one of these. And we did that by uh, using this just simple arrangement of resistors. Uh, basically what we're going to try to do is figure out the resistance value right here of, let us say, a cable pair. I've represented it by a schematic of just a resistor. And we do that by uh, adjusting a variable resistor over here to um, effectively balance this circuit so that I don't end up with any voltage difference between these two points right here. I'll actually put a meter in here. Now I've redone that uh, circuit kind of, kind of a whole lot um, in this uh, this um, SC500 kit from uh, Snap Circuits. Those of you who have the 500 kit will be able to build this circuit. I've arranged the resistors a little bit differently here. This is the one we're going to try to figure out. It's the same as this over here. We're going to try to figure out what the resistance value of this resistor right here is by looking at this meter right here. And these are our variable resistors down here. I also have one that's a slider. That's the RV in your SC500 kit. So I can use this variable resistor or I can use these fixed resistors to try to figure out what this value is. Okay, I've got a bunch of extra meters on here. One of the advantages of uh, doing the classes that I do is I have tons of extra stuff. So what I've done is I've put an uh, amp meter in here so I can measure the current coming through this leg. I put an amp meter in here so I can measure the current coming through this leg. I put an amp meter right here so I can measure the total current coming through the circuit. I put an LED in here that lights up when the circuit is, uh, current is flowing so that I can tell because if I don't have this meter in here I can't actually tell that I've turned the circuit on. Here's the switch over here to turn the circuit on and I've also put a voltmeter across this resistor and this resistor. Now these are two of, of the same value resistances out of the kit. You'll have a little bit of trouble building this circuit um, because you'll have to simulate this. You can use different resistance values in here, but it's a lot simpler for our purposes if they're the same. So here we go. Here's the circuit. I've used out of the kit R2 and R2 so that I have the same resistance value here. I'm going to turn the circuit on. If it's balanced, this meter will not change. That is, if I have the correct resistance selected down here to balance this unknown, resistor up here, which would be my cable pair, let us say. So I'm going to select a resistor down here and look what happened. The meter went the wrong way. Now I know the circuit's on because the LED is on, but the meter went th it went off the zero. So it's pretty obvious that this resistor is not adequate. It's not simulating or balancing this unknown resistor. So I'm going to move this over. It's still moving to the left. I went to a higher resistance. I'm going to move it over again. Now it didn't move quite as far that time, so I must be getting closer. All right, I'm going to move to this one. Oh, I like that. The needle stays on zero, meaning that the voltage here on this leg is the same as over here. And I can see that on this, these two external voltmeters. All right, I got a 0.13 volts on this leg and a 0.13 volts on that leg. Additionally, the current flow through one leg is 140 microamps. This one here is about 140, eh, 42. And this is the total current coming through the circuit going through the LED. All right? So I got a zero here. Everything is balanced. That tells me that this unknown resistor is in fact 10 
thousand ohms because in the kit R4 that is R4 is 10,000 ohms. If I go higher it doesn't balance. See the meter is off. Right? You can see my current values are different and my voltage drops are different. If I go back to the right one I'm balanced. If I go to a lower one the needle goes to the left my numbers are not the same. If I go down even further it's even worse. So by going to this one here I know that this unknown value is in fact 10,000 ohms. Now I could have used Right? I could have used this variable one over here, right? but I wouldn't have known what it was. So they get all these clips to stay on. I would not have known what it was. In this instance, I've already set this. Watch what happens when I move the slider. You see that? My meter goes off. Go the other way, the meter comes up this way. So I can use this sliding resistor once again to get a balanced circuit. Pretty close. Now I could use an ohm meter to measure this value, but I can tell you that in fact it is 10,000 ohms because when I go to 10,000 ohms, and as I get this thing hooked up the right way, when I go to 10,000 ohms, Voila, I'm balanced. Balanced here and here, voltage drop across the resistors. Balanced here and here, current flow through the two legs, total current flow. There you go. Wheatstone Bridge.